Welcome to Blacktown Football Park for tonight's Men's Premier League 2 match of the round between two of Blacktown Association's founding member clubs. Rudy Hill FC host Blacktown St. Pats. It's a Wednesday night, late evening catch-up. Game in the cold, in the wet, between two of the competition's more interesting sides. I'm your caller, Mark DePoli, honoured as always to bring you live coverage of tonight's game. Hello to you if you're watching in Fiji. Hello if you're watching from here at the ground. Welcome to a place where magic happens often. Hosts Rudy Hill re-entered the Blackdown Premier League space this year, tasking Daniel Gauci, formerly of the setup at Polonia, the job of restarting a project. With him, he brought a bunch of attacking talent from a reserve-grade grand final quality team, but a combination of injuries and teething problems have made that transition difficult. It's not the complete Polonia reserve grade team of 23, but it's close enough to mention it more than once throughout tonight. And in a first time since we began digital coverage of our premier competitions, we get to see just how hard that jump from resis to first actually is, what that level split is like, and so on and so forth. But they're more than that. Rudy Hill is a winning team of yesteryear, and it means a lot to the people of that great club to be back in the Premier League space. St. Pat's, well, after picking up five from an available 27 points against the three teams that finished above them last year, St. Pat's have already broken their hoodoo a couple of games into this year as they picked up their first three-point haul of the season against promotion co-favourites Oakville Ravens. A team who has a lot of fun on the pitch and are notoriously difficult to play against, for what reason that is, not many may know. My guess is that they're actually a talented group of players who just need to take a slightly hit at perhaps a slightly higher gear before they're ready to go up perhaps to the first division. Some of their players are ready, some of them players are not just yet, but it's all a part of their journey as individuals and as a team. So have they taken that next step yet? Well, that giant W sitting next to Oakville Ravens says so to me. The two teams are about to play off in a wet game here on a Wednesday night at Blacktown Football Park. A reminder, my name is Mark Tapoli. I'm half of the BDFA. Thanks for joining us. I think it's about time we go through the starting 11s of these both sides. For once, we'll start with the visitors. Blacktown St. Pats are considered the visiting side today. In goal, it's former Spurs representative James Akinor, who's put on some massive size in the off-season. He has been pumping iron, that's for sure, and he looks about as intimidating as a goalkeeper could ever possibly look. From right to left in the back four, Fadi Adi starts in the number 30 jersey, formerly from Maryland's FC. He's a waterproofer, which is going to be very, very helpful tonight. The mid, oh, middle two of the defence are number 23, Luke Gonzalez, and number nine, Suhail Koya, the destroyer. Of course, there have been people on this live stream waiting to hear that. You've heard it from these dulcet tones once again. On the left-hand side of that back four, it's number 26, Emmanuel Borges. The deepest of the midfield three is Nick Pinch in the number six. Further ahead is Arsenal and Mangle, who you would have seen on our podcast this week. And, of course, it's second best player in the league last year, according to the referee votes at the end of each game. Number four, and, of course, an all-star himself twice now, Michael Sawa. On the right, it's Yasu Buta in the number five. Off to the left, it's Baran Atesh, who's back uh, in the number 11 jersey, and through the middle. He's never scored a match of the round goal, but he's got two to start the season, though, so he's in good form heading into it. Number 10, T-boy Tamba Aliyu. Now, it's a very new-look side, but with some familiar names for Ruti Hill as they re-enter the competition. In goal is Aaron Singh, who, from all accounts, is a fantastic goalkeeper who's had a lot of work to do. From right to left in the back four, it's number 77, and podcast guest on multiple occasions... Of course, Hussein al Saad in the number 77 jersey, just 19 years old, of course, was part of that grand final winning 21-2 side that was so dramatic last year. Veteran of the competition, Brad Dickinson, at 34 years old, is strutting his stuff out from the defence, tasked with a bit more running to do these days, less of a luxury player, more like an absolute stonewall defender. And he's next to a man who, the last time he played on this live stream, was in the colours of Polonia. He played as an 8 in midfield. Now he wears 24 and is the left-sided centre-back. It's Junior Rao. At the left-back spot, it's Cameron Christensen, who also featured on the podcast this Week, he is the reserve great coach, you might remember, from one Cameron with a K now to one with a C, who wears number 12, Cameron Howe, also played in that Polonia reserve grade grand final. In the number 12 jersey is the 12-year veteran of Granville Rage. Ahead of them is the very technically proficient number 21, Vinal Shankar, making his uh, match of the round debut next to number 10, of course, 
the grand final goal scorer in that game for Polonia, Shane Kumar, the ex Fiji international, no less. Let's go to the left first, number seven. It is, in fact, Stevie G, most notably known as Stevie Gordon. He has two goals already this year, also one in Rosie, so make it three in three. Ali Hassan is also playing just ahead along the same flank as his 21-2's grand final winning teammate in Hussein al Saad. Hassan played some of the reserve goal game prior to this as well. He's in the 99 jersey, absolutely unmissable. And through the middle, of course, it's goal of the finals contender, Nishal Shankar, formerly of Newbury, formerly of Polonia, following Daniel Gauci all the way to Rusey Hill. Those are the two starting 11s. A reminder, my name is Mark DiPoli. Thank you so much for being here. It is truly an honour to bring you Wednesday night games. If you do like what you hear, if you do like what you see, if you're appreciating the fact that there's roadworks happening off to the left of our screen, please do leave a like on either the YouTube or Facebook platform that you're watching on. Leave a comment because we read them out, should they be appropriate enough to do so. If you're shouting out someone, we'll, we'll certainly do that. But from wherever you're tuning in, from around the world, from around Australia, from around Western Sydney, thanks for being here. And let's see what these two teams can dish up as we head finally into this make-up game, of course. And now all the talking, and now we just wait. We're a couple of minutes delayed, of course, 33 minutes past eight. This will now finish closer to 11 o'clock than it will 10 o'clock, which is, uh, well, not great if you're a shift worker, that's for sure. But I'm sure you'll all appreciate the effort that these two teams are going through in order to give you a competition and a bit of entertainment that you will enjoy. We've also got 17-year-old referee Cameron Callahan, who is going to be the assistant before your eyes down the, down, down the bottom of us. Caelan Thompson, formerly of Park Lee, in the goalkeeping space. The 19-year-old's off to the far side, assistant referee. Through the middle, of course, most importantly, Gregory Roberts, who will have to choose the B2 Group Sox player of the match at the end of this one. Who's going to take out the player of the match? If you want to leave a prediction, feel free to do so. We'll also look through those at half time. 45 minutes of wet and wild action in the cold as we start to get closer to winter. Winter is coming, John Snow. And I'm sure it's going to be a fun one. We're going to look at what, like, as I mentioned in the preamble, what a reserve grade to first grade transition looks like. Let's see what the established powerhouses that are some Pats can produce. They've talked as if they are really wanting to be promotion favourites this year. They've knocked past their hoodoo of not being able to beat teams sitting above them. What can they produce out there tonight? It's a mix of youth and it's a mix of experience. Of course, T-Boy and Michael Sowell are the two more established all-stars in that side. But don't, be, uh, don't, don't let your sights off Yasu Buta and also Baran Atesh in the 5, in the 11 jersey as well. Away we go, the number 10 finds the number 4 and we're already making a change. What on earth is going on? I, well, I said it would be entertaining on your Wednesday night. Uh, we're having to stop the game. Is it a jersey issue or a shin pads issue? Well, either way, we're not getting out of here until it turns over to Thursday, I reckon, on the clock. Well, I think, have we made a sub? That's a different person who was just on. How strange. This is why the Black Town Premier League competition is the best competition in the world, no matter the division that we are in. We are finally, finally, I do have to say, underway. Thank you for being here. And excuse the fact that I just forgot how to use my voice at the end of that sentence. Suhail Koya, who has a goal this season. He's a one-time penalty scoring Goal scorer in a match of the round, most recently in their game up against Minchinbury, a 2-0 win. That one was Max Dengate got the other goal that day. He played reserve grade prior to this. That was in that number 30 jersey, Fadi Adi. Clipped over the top by Arsenal and Mangle, who is just quietly probably St. Pat's most technical player. Don't let the likes of the front three... Even the front four hear that, but Arsenal and Mangle, formerly of Quakers Hill Tigers, of course, took a year off two years ago uh, because he and his partner had a baby, is back into the swing of things and had another pre-season to get back to his full levels of fitness. He's such an impressive player and also genuinely quite hilarious. If you tune into our podcast, you would know that as Nishal Shankar picks up the ball for the first time, tries to switch it out wide towards, of course, Stevie G, they call him. Stevie Gordo in that number seven, unmissable, as Rao goes all the way back to Aranti's Singh, but we'll call him Aaron, as he sends it forward, and it's intercepted by some pats, and then 
sent forward again, this time by Rudy Hill. It's a bit of aerial ping pong as Nishal Shankar and Gordo can't quite figure themselves out. Picked up there by the number six wearing some Pats player in Nick Pinch. Who's an astute defensive midfielder as well. The midfield of St. Pat's very, very impressive. Mangle. No Vikash Mishra for the first time in a long time for St. Pat's. The veteran into the twilight of his career. Still around the space. And certainly still one that they'll miss in terms of his dressing room leadership, but not in the squads these days. Baranatesh picks it up and drives straight away at Hussein al Saad, testing the 21-2's former player. That team all but fell apart, but the two that have remained the most bright sparks of a team full of stars that won the grand final in that 21-2's in, in what was genuinely, and I mean this wholeheartedly, the most freakish season I think I've ever seen at local level football. This will go all the way back to the number nine wearing Suhail Koya. The Destroyer, back to James Akinor, who has his first touch, and it's a good one away from his body to find now Adi. Picked up there by Yasubuta. First touch in the middle there for Shane Kumar, grand final goal scorer down the other end of this pitch. So we'll have to wait till the second half before we can try and repeat the goal that he scored. Being closed down there by Baranatesh. So right now you will notice that there are two players currently wearing the seven jersey. And the left back of Rudy Hill has tape across his back that indicates that he is the number 71. So a little uh, haphazard and a little bit inventive too. as they drive forward through Buta, and he goes down, and that could have been the first opportunity for a free kick to be given in the game, and it wasn't. There's another opportunity that's brewed there as lightning strikes very close to us, which is quite concerning because, obviously, the rules that surround lightning and the ability to actually play football, I think that would be Cameron Christensen actually in that 71 makeshift jersey as the actual number seven. Stevie Gordo put some pressure there on Nick Pinch, but he wasn't feeling the bite. For Childers to come away with it was Fadi Atti. Yeah, another big coming together there. And then it was kicked into him by accident by the reserve great coach. And because of the surface that he's on, Yasu Buta certainly felt that one. Played relatively quickly as Mangle finds Tamba T-Boy Aliyu, who is currently a recuperating Arsenal fan. Michael Sola, second place in player of the year voting, went down under the challenge there. Won a penalty the last time he played. Yes, Ubuta came from an offside position, and even though the ball in was very nice, pleasing on the eye, the offside flag will negate anything he did beyond that point. Brad Dickinson, a match of the round goal scorer on multiple occasions against Pons when he played as a striker, against Doonside in a grand final qualifier when he played, of course, as a midfielder. A very, very respected figure in the competition, a serial winner, if you like, someone so beloved. But, of course, it doesn't get over the fact that his one true love, it seems, in the coaching world is Daniel Gauci. That's why he followed the 38-year-old all the way here. Intercepted there by Hussein, but it's picked up here. And St. Pat's will have a shot that's been blocked off. And it was T-Boy Aliou who was the one who didn't see his shot make it past the first couple of yards. And the main untested did sing in net. Buta up against Christensen. Now he's into the box across the face of goal. Cleared away by Junior Rao. And that was good defensive awareness by a guy who I've only ever seen play in midfield, which is quite the change to be doing it, especially against a strong attacking side like Blacktown St. Pat's. Delivered in by Pinchy, as you can hear out there with that surround sound coming through your speakers, and then cleared away by Gordo. And then given away straight away to Hustle and Mangle. Had his shot blocked off as well, and as the deep block of Rudy Hill becomes effective, and can they launch on the counter attack? Here is the question being asked. The outside of the foot pass was attempted there by, I think, Vinal Shankar. 
in that 21 jersey. In fact, it was. Arkanor plays it short and sweet. The only Spurs player to transition from Spurs to St. Pat's in the offseason. Clipped ball in behind there by Arsalan Mangal, who has such a recognisable posture when he kicks the ball, especially on those longer attempts. There's a hold up here as the referee chats to some of the Rudy Hill players and then something's been thrown off to the side there. So whether it's jewellery or whether it's something else illegal, I'm not sure, but on we go. As referee Gregory Roberts has more than just the game to contend with. Dickinson will get there first. It's a powered punt in behind. Stevie Gordo now one-on-one -on -one with Fatty. It's been poorly crossed in. Gordo, in his first year at Blacktown Workers, one of a couple of former Blacktown Workers players. He's also feeling, excuse the name, but feeling the pinch on his back. But yes, he's got uh, somewhere between 15 and 17 goals, he recalls, in his first season at Workers. As now forward comes the right back of St. Patsy, squares it across the face, and it was Tamba Aliu who had his chance taken away from him by Junior Rao, who's had a very positive start, especially if you're focusing in on the interception stat. So it's another corner to defend. As the rain continues to come down at a pretty steady rate, it is a windless night here tonight, 100 metres inside the Rudy Hill border from Doonside. To take will be Baranatesh. Live towards the back stick, and it was won by Rudy Hill, who cleared their lines temporarily. Michael Sawa picks it up and uncharacteristically gives it away there. So that there is Cameron Christensen. Dickinson goes back to Junior Rao. Lumps it forward and just bounces on the halfway line as it's picked up for the first time that we get to mention Emmanuel Borge. Mangle to Nicky Pinch. Suhail so Koya, who's capable very much going forward. He's actually naturally a nine, as you can tell by his jersey number, which he's clung onto despite dropping all the way back, but he was required in defensive areas as the offside flag is being ignored right now by the referee. And on goes St. Pats to Rudy Hill's perplexed state. And St. Pats could have the advantage here, but finally it will be called up. And I thought the referee was intentionally ignoring Cameron Callahan's raised flag, but it turns out he just hadn't quite seen it yet. The headset device is not quite working tonight. They're quite literally not working. They're not wearing them, so... It will be a difficult, an even more difficult job for the referees to contend with. And here is Aaron Singh. He leaves it for Junior Rao, who's got a mighty punt on him. One by Suhail Koya. Vinal Shankar testing Shane Kuma back to Vinal Shankar. Cleared away. And then more comprehensively there by Arsala Mangal who you might remember on our podcast, and this is why Shachunin suggested that coach Mario Gonzalez had hired Sylvester Roberts, their former striker and match of the round goal scorer at this venue, as a bodyguard. So if you want more of those little funnies on your Thursday evening heading into match of the round weeks, be sure to tune into the Black Tent Football Hour podcast on YouTube. I've posted a link via to each week, each week on Thursday nights via Facebook too. BDSFA TV. So in taken quickly. On that far side. As St. Pat's have a chance to counter with a 4v4 situation here. It's played quickly in behind, but not enough power behind it. Although somehow, Tambor, T-Boy, Ali Yu got there. He then has to contend with the byline and a defender. And he's got past him now into the box. Can he find the square to Yasubuta? And what's been called up here? Was it a corner kick? It will be, in fact. So St. Pats will have 
corners in quick succession. Or no, free kick, in fact. So it's basically a corner being taken 10 yards inside of the normal spot and you can certainly fashion an opportunity by thwacking one to the near post or perhaps lumping it towards the back post. And what Wilson, Pats and Baron Atesh decide to do here. We're right on the byline. It's clipped in towards T-Boy. It was cleared away by Brad Dickinson. And it'll just be a goal kick. I'm being told by the footballing gods that rain, heavier rain, is on the way. So that might mean you need to put your windshield wipers on. It might mean you need to put another jumper on. And for me, it might mean I need to close this gigantic window in front of me. Sent away by Singh. This will go towards Dickinson, who shouldn't lose any aerial contest against any player in world football. Sent forward here towards Nishal Shankar, who is so adept at finding the back of the net. That's been cleared away. Nishal Shankar, 31 years old. At his absolute footballing IQ best. At this stage of his career, he picked up 16 goals with 7 assists. His 16th goal came in the semi-final. That got them into that grand final. And Shane Kumar found the only goal for Polonia in that one. Before he won the way of tie as it went. You might remember in one of the most dramatic games. And as I said, this field is one that produces magical moments often. Good interception there by Brad Dickinson. He's probably been the player of the match so far along... Side, I'd probably say Arsenal Mangle. Of course, we have to think about these things now with the B2 Group Sox player of the match in each game for the men's and women's Premier League match of the rounds. So still in the early stages of this game, but no side yet to really fashion an opportunity where you can say that that's a definite goal scoring chance. No goalkeeper really tested yet, not Akanor or Singh. So in taker, Hussein al Saad urged to drop back just a little bit. Only 19 years old, Rudy, he'll have a right back for the next decade and a half if they treat him right. Dickinson. Won comprehensively by Suhail Koya. Picked up there by... Powell, who sent it forward. Nishal Shankar, I like what his idea and intent was. This will go all the way through to Akinor, who is able to claim the ball using his goalkeeping gloves for the first time in a long while. As both sides struggle to find their attacking fluidity in the wet and wild conditions. Koya, pinch, one, two, bounce between those two there, the six and the nine. Fadiadi could make a run in behind. Nice touch. Good decision making there by Yasu Buta. Arsenal and Mangle now. He's waiting for the run so that he can play one of his trademark through balls. Now the run's being made by Borge. And it's been intercepted there. Rudy Hill in their fantastically coloured jerseys. So easy to spot. Should they get promoted, we'll have two yellow teams in the Premier League one as the referees eventually blown his whistle, but not in favour of some Pats who are a little incensed by that. Back in play, Junior Rao, who's got probably the most fantastic hairdo out there. Cameron Christensen living dangerously there and giving it away as a left back, and now he's out of position, but he's won it back. By some miracle, some pressure being put there on Singh, but he is unfazed by that. Mangle, not his greatest touch out of the sky, but his second touch was much better. Fed in behind by Michael Sola. What's the weight on the ball like? Great sliding in challenge. Perfectly timed by the goalkeeper. Opted to go with the knee approach rather than with his hands, and it worked out perfectly well. That's probably the most major opportunity of the game so far. We tick towards 9pm here on a Wednesday night. Reserve grade game prior to this, absolutely delightful to tune into for some midweek football action. And of course, if you are watching from around the grounds, although your games will be happening at the same time, perhaps you're tuning in while on the bench or your game has ended early for some reason, let us know what your scores are like and we'll check them and read them out at half time. 
Yasu boots up. Doesn't get past Christensen with any ease there, but he tried the pirouette and he's hit the deck really rather hard there. Cameron Christensen still going, and Vinal Shankar tried the outside of the foot clip over the top. It somehow found Stevie G here. Stevie G will try the Stevie G, and over it went. Couldn't find his third goal of the season. So played short. So Hale Koya, Arsenal and Mangle, of course, only requiring one touch. Pinch, then got it back under control. Forward they progress. Black down some pats. Taken off him by Pinch, who tries to clip it in behind. Dickinson is able to penetrate through some pats midfield with one well executed pass. Forward now comes the rather high nosebleed section in Cameron Howe. Left footed, weak footed clip in. And it was clearly that, and away comes some pats, and now their six is out of position, Rudy Hill, so they'll have to cover him, that's for sure. Vinal Shankar is the one doing that. Koya, if you have just joined us, by the way, and you're looking at the bottom of your screen to those yellow jerseys, yes, they have the exact same number, Stevie Gordo, they call him Stevie G, and as well, Cameron with a K, Christensen. So in token to the pressureless Dickinson. Urged for Singh to swap sides of the pitch, which he does. He takes up that challenge with ease. Rao. Dangerous ball out by Singh. Yasubuta's touch wasn't perfect. He's batted into, although Rudy Hill are able to recover it. And some pats probably feeling like they should have combined more effectively there. A chance squandered. Oh, great touch there by the very experienced Stevie Gordo, though he's batted into by Arsenal and Mangle. Two stalwarts of the PL2 coming together there so well. It's been a great contest to watch so far. As there's a tussle off the ball there, involving Dickinson and Tamba Aliu, I believe. Dickinson might be a stalwart of the Premier League game, but he's a very newcomer to the Premier League 2 system, although he will, of course, know some players around the grounds. He's been in that first division space for a lot longer than he has. He hasn't quite got that reputation as that ball is sent in behind and then sent away intelligently by Fatty Adi. So Rudy Hill have a throw rather quite high up the pitch, and this is Quite advantageous to their long shot taking midfielders and attackers who could certainly capitalise on an opportunity like this. Are some Pats aware of what they bring to the party? Stevie Gordo will tee one up. It's looking good from this kind of angle and it's just about over. I'm sure that on your screens that looked like it was in and you can see Michael Sola telling his team that they need to close down far better than that. Letting a technically proficient player like Stevie G just quickly take a pot shot like that. In fact, it wasn't even quick. He had time to wind up and have a cup of tea with it too. So some pats. The majority of the possession, you have to say. The better of the two chances, that's probably a little less easy to describe. Sola. Mangle. Likely to give it away here. He does. Picked up there by Cameron Howe. Dickinson, of course, the aerial contest won. Vinal Shankar from one Shankar to another. Lovely work there by Michael Sowa. Yasubuta has an overlapping run in Fadi. And now he's using his storming pace in behind. One touch into the box across the face of goal. Struck towards goal by Aliu, who's still hoping for that first match of the round goal. He's playing the most forward position he has ever in the history of the match of the rounds. He's basically the nine now, although he is wearing a ten. Are some pats establishing themselves a little bit with these strings of possession? Missed by Stevie Gordo. Picked up here, Tamba Aliu, not one to really take it from distance. He'll try and find Iyasu Buta, turns away from his man, but also in turn he does from goal towards Michael Sola, who knew from the second it left Iyasu Buta's boot 
that it wasn't going to find him. Can they spring the counter-attack? This is good. And a good idea by Daniel Gauci's men, who, of course, are missing, for what I've been told, three of their best players, including who they called a couple of weeks ago on the podcast before we had the washed-out weekend, arguably their best player in the comp. A Fiji international still representing those boys. So we've got a couple of X. PG boys, as that will bring the contest into a, a slight moment of hot-headedness and will that sustain any longer than right now than the present. A little tussle off the ball as the frustrations emerging there out of Aliou. Terrible day to be a goalkeeper, isn't it? Especially if your Akanor hasn't touched the ball in a significant amount of time in the wets, in the cold, on your own. And you'll probably feel like no one's listening to him either. Sola, Aliou, it evaded him, though, sent forward by Junior Rao, one in the air there. By Luke Gonzalez in that 23 jersey. Shah Shankar is down, stretching his in the hip flexors, I do believe. Pinch. Simple pass to Luki Gonzalez. Of course, coach Mario Gonzalez sent in behind intelligently by Manny Borge. But I think a frustrated and increasingly frustrated T boy ran out of space there, and it will be a throw for Rudy Hill. So Blacktown and Pats actually sit in fourth position on four points right now. They've got one draw, one win, one loss. So a perfectly equal record. Rudy Hill are winless. They're not pointless, though. They have one point. They've conceded ten goals. That's been their problem all year. They've scored more goals than they've had games, though. So they are certainly capable of doing so. Two of them have come from Stevie Gordy, of course. Gordo, of course, I should say. T-Boy closing down Singh there, who does a good job to clear it. He'll be the warmer of the two goalkeepers, that's for sure. As Sid Pat's starting to assert a bit of territory, you'd have to say. Baron Atesh. All the way back to Akano. Fresh signing, starting goalkeeper. Took over the reins from Sean McDonald in the off-season. Koya. Who still thinks like an attacker. You can tell by the way he moves with the ball. Always, always looking to go forward towards it. Forward they drive. It's an under-hit ball, though. And sent away Hussein al Saad. Clip in behind. It was imperfect, unfortunately. The rain starting to get heavier out here at Blacktown Football Park. Undeniably the case now. Sense on a bit of a jog is Adi. In a tussle there with Gorda. Well, Gorda left a foot very high up in the air there, and the St. Pat's players are asking, what on earth was that? We've come away with it with absolutely no quarrels from the referee, though. Good interception there by Shane Kumar, who was in good spirits before the game as well. Now driving towards goal. It is the grand final goal scorer himself. So Hale Koya was keen to it, though. Now he'll drive forward in a trademark forward run of his as he tries to dribble past the referee just for good measure as well. That's one, two, three, four if you include the referee's dribble pass. Then he's lost the ball. A slight kick out would have warranted a yellow card if he'd have won it. Picked up here by T-Boy Aliou who's remembering he's a midfielder by trade in doing this work. He's been clipped into, hacked into, now stopped by hook or by crook. And eventually the yellow card should surely be given for stopping the momentum of that attack. One, two, three players tried to bring him down. Nothing to it, says the referee. A free kick they will get. Yasu Buta at the back post is free. So 
sent into the box. There is T-boy Aliyu. Maran Tesh was there, but Brad Dickinson still the most quality out there, you'd have to say. Got married in the off-season, of course. And from what the Facebook posts tell me, was an absolutely fantastic celebration. As that one sent away, almost to the Ann Aquilina Fields. I believe it was kicked so hard it just triggered the lights in the public restrooms. St. Pat's mighty high up the pitch now, in the box. And just lacking that final third quality. They're exactly even on zero goal difference. Eight goals scored, eight goals conceded. They have suffered through an absolutely thrilling game. A 4-3 win, of 4-3 uh, loss, I should say, to Polonia in those co-promotion favourite derbies that are going to be so fun this year. There's four teams, realistically, that you could say that could... Certainly vouch for a way to go up. Parkley looking for a way to go straight back up. St. Pat's looking to be in the first division for the first time since it became a two-division competition. Oakville. And, of course, Polonia looking to do the bounce back after a couple of years. Surely he was offside. Cameron Callahan agrees. Again, frustrations building quite clearly for T-Boy. That might just be the Arsenal fan in him. Christensen, not Andreas, Cameron with a K. Rao in that 11 jersey across to his centre-back partner who's hugging that far side touchline to Cameron Howe. And Howe now finds Shane Kumar on the turn again, quite close to that byline. Dangerous ways to live, but Rudy Hill will be okay. Singh plays it short to the man who just headed the ball to him as we close in on the half-time whistle. A game lacking significant chances on goal and significant contributions required by either goalkeeper. One by Mangle. One by Sola. As some pats progress forward. This is good work by last year's Silver Player of the Year. Ali Yu got his touch wrong and he was probably put off by the honking horn to our left. Sent him behind this time. Blocked off though. In a game lacking quality as Rudy Hill looked to just sort of rest on their laurels and lump it long. It's looking like it will be that until at least the half time period when Daniel Gauci can get some words of wisdom into them. wonder what Mario Gonzalez's advice will be at this point. More of the same. We just get those shooting boots on, lads. That's nice work there by Vinal Shankar, who quietly gets through a lot of work and doesn't really put many passes wrong. Closing down there by Rao. Here is that man in contention, although that was a pass back. They still maintain possession. He'll be beaten to the ball here, though, as Pinch puts on the pinch, and he gets past his man, Buta, who's miles offside. And Pinch was saying, you should have left it for me, and I would have been onside. And that was a highly intelligent move by the number six who wears six. And he's asking the question, why did the game get stopped when I was clearly chasing for it and would have got it too? And you know what? He raises a good point. But I think at the end of the day, he probably outsmarted everybody, including himself there. That was a 4,000 IQ move by the deep lying midfielder. So intelligent, in fact, that even some of our most experienced referees wouldn't spot it. That's a good bit of play by Nick Pinch. That's a moment that I think I'll harp on for the next couple of games that we see him in. That's really impressed me, that intelligence has. One by Addy. Here is Pinciano, Ronaldo, and Buta has had a struggled last couple of minutes.
Throw in taken. Gordo was harped on. Let's come back to the throw in taker, Christensen. Back playing alongside some former workers' boys, including the likes of Bradley Dickinson and Gordo this year. And of course, dipping his toes into the coaching world as Coyer sends that a little haphazardly into the air. Although Brad Dickinson's missed it and is calling for the foul. They've got the numerical advantage here. Some Pats should surely find the goal now. The second Dickinson was out of position. A first match of the round goal for Tamba T-Boy Aliou. And isn't he loving it? A frustrated last couple of minutes that Rudy Hill are not happy with because they're going to be going into the break almost assuredly now down by one as they find themselves still at the foot of the table. It was strong work in the aerial duel for the first time. Commentator's curse pulled through. Dickinson lost the aerial battle. And with him out of position, St. Pats just had to find the shot on target. That they did at the near post, perhaps catching out Singh a little bit surprised. Tamba Aliou has a goal on camera. The All-Star shows up at the All-Star home ground. Rudy Hill down at home, technically. St. Pats, the beneficiaries of a mistake at the back. Dickinson, he will look to make amends. He'll be unhappy with that moment there. Some Pats just recycle it through two of their more experienced players through the spine. Some Pats with the dominant possession numbers in these last 10 to 15 minutes or so, you'd have to say it's been a bit of sitting and hope from today's considered home side. Runners in behind either side of the flanks. It's been missed there by Junior Rao. Dickinson got there first. A burst of pace, of pace, I should say. And a show of strength too. Gordo, hands ref was the call by Nishal Shankar. Ref didn't even consider it for a moment. Vinal Shankar now towards Nishal and Gordo. Mangle. Back to Akanor. As his first half begins to head towards its dying embers. A first stanza that has Tamba Aliou's name all over it. After his goal just a couple of moments ago. Nice turn by Baron Atesh, but it was read well. And now Rudy Hill looking to bounce back pretty quickly. Ooh, a late challenge there, but advantage will be played. Not that the hand was raised. Lovely one-two and triangles being formed between two players there, which is uber impressive. Ball in behind. Tamba Ali, show of strength and pace. The square ball. Momentum lost, but not completely. It's come here to Michael Sower, who can hit them. Michael Sower's battered into by Brad Dickinson. And the referee sees absolutely nothing wrong with it. We'll stop the play just to check on the well-being of Michael Sower here. The 25-year-old would certainly have lost some breath from his two lungs just then as Brad Dickinson probably put the might of that last challenge into that one. I think some Pats, from a, again, a game IQ point of view, didn't actually contest the decision that much. Didn't really throw their hands up in dismay. And as a result, no appeals process besides from Michael himself. Winded and alone. And potentially injured. As now the support cast comes through. Winded and alone sounds like a new dating show. To come to Australian free-to-air channels. This is what the late game does to my brain. So both teams will use this time to come together and discuss how they're going to finish out this first half. So Hale Koya is the one leading the charge for those who are coming together for some pats. The rest of them checking on the well-being of Michael Sola. Yasu Buta doing something in between. All of Rudy Hill in a spot there. Arsalan Mangle and Baran Atesh went off to the side to chat to their coach.
So St. Pat's having convos here and there, primarily led by one of their senior figures in Koya the Destroyer. Perhaps we should call him Koya the Communicator. Michael Sola back to his feet extremely gingerly. Still asking the questions asked St. Pat's now through Baran Atesh as to why there was absolutely no issue that the referee had with that challenge. Michael Sola will have a stint on the sideline. A stint meaning that St. Pat's are down temporarily to 10. Tamba Aliu drops into that sort of 10 hole there. However, Addy there, Gordo now, just as other box, delivers towards absolutely no one in the yellow shirt, unfortunately. The idea was good, but no one was there to receive. Gordo out of the sky. He'll go for the spectacular there. Couldn't actually wrap his body around it. It's come now here to Shankaran. What a save! In fact, I think it was Kumar who got the shot off in the end. And Akanor was called into action for the first time in this game. A moment of real significance where we get to show exactly why they invested in him when the Spurs team collapsed in the off-season. They came calling for him. And now he has returned serve with a great save there. So a rare instance for Rudy Hill up high in the attacking third. It's sent in low and cleared away. Again, towards the middle of that box, it was cleared away. Christensen gave it away. Is that Arsenal and Mangle, who was the furthest player in St. Pat's Colors for? Well, he's not really known for his pace in behind. He'll pick up the ball with the option of playing it forward over the top. It's been picked up there by Cameron Christensen. Michael Sowa back onto the pitch now, so we are 11 v 11. St. Pat's would have felt so aggrieved had they have gone and lost their lead, surrendered it, while at the numerical disadvantage. Thankfully for them, though, they're okay. They could realistically go first place if they win by six goals and nobody else on the top three, the top of them, wins tonight or draws. would be a seismic achievement and shake up to the table. We are into the dying moments of this first half now. We're looking at a couple of minutes, if that. Soon to be to the discretion of the referee as to how long left there will be a stoppage for Michael Sowell. will have to be considered that. As the rain's cleared up, by the way, we'll see how that changes between halves. Gonzalez. Yasu Buta. A no-look pass of real cheek there. Addy delivers in, low and hard. Misdirected, though. One touch out of the feet. Kumar, Vinal Shankar, Christensen. Batted into was grand final goal scorer, Shane Kumar. And a foul, not half-time, a foul being called up there. So Rudy Hill with another chance, perhaps, through the likes of Junior Rao or Dickinson to lump it forward late on. They'll go short, though. Dickinson, Cameron Christensen. Nice ball to change the direction of play here. Now the midfielders drop in to try and receive. Instead, it's sent long there towards a called Ali Hassan. Featured on the podcast twice. He was one of the happiest men in the world when you shouted to him about their grand final win. It was Hassan who actually had the shot. Now it's Gordo on the edge of the box. Gordo! Oh, the upright behind the goal. It looked for all money's worth of like that was creeping into the top corner. It did not. Looks can be deceiving. So very close. He's looked there most threatening when he's had half a second to unleash his right foot. And will that be the final chance for either side in this first half? St. Pat's, after a couple of scares in these last moments, need to just make sure that they get to the end of the first stanza with their lead intact. Passing it around the back. Best way to waste time is to have the ball. Buta comes central and drops in to receive. Gives it away though. It's been a, 
unidealistic first half for him by his high, high standards. Yasu Buta, we know what he's capable of, a tricky winger with great pace and bravery too, which is such an important trait. St. Pat's still minimal to no press from Rudy Hill. That's the way they want to play. No midfield of St. Pat's, basically now just some players sitting on the line of Rudy Hill who are happy to accommodate that. Buta. Again, he's given it away there, unfortunately. He'll do the defensive work, hard work, though. And he's won it back. That's much better from him. That'll give him a bit of heart. Sawa goes backwards. Somehow got the pass off. Eyes towards the referee as still we go on. Luki Gonzalez. Forward runs Fadi, and it's picked up here by Gordo, who's had the two best chances off of long-distance shots for Rudy Hill. What a signing he's proving to be. Centred pass, that was a little misweighted there. And now this is a real chance. Baron Natasha's running it behind. It looks a bit too hearty, though. And it will be a claim that Singh will take every time. No rush to really take it quickly, but his teammates are now urging him to just send it. That's a monstrous kick. Koya watches it out of the sky and has to just put it somewhere where he thinks nobody else is standing wearing a yellow jersey, and that's a real asset off the right foot. Avaranti Singh. And still we go on. The time is now 9.20. Still to the discretion of the referee. Rudy Hill now give it away. Some great defensive work by Tamba Aliu. Forward pass here to Buta. He's won it. Again, that shows a bit of heart there. Ball in behind. Looks very effective. This will be a decisive second goal, surely. Can he get around the keeper? The keeper has taken him down. The keeper has taken him down. And to no penalty called there. A massive decision, and Rudy Hill can look to bounce from here. Going to have to do more than that, says the ref. Well, this might be more than that, so little bobble didn't quite put him off. And in the end, Baron Atesh was completely unmarked. No Rudy Hill defenders closing him down. And now that the ball is dead, they're going to ask the questions, how was it not a penalty? Well, though, once again, some Pat's appeals for the penalty, short-lived... And short breath. My suggestion to them would be, if you want a penalty, scream your lungs out for it. Well, still we go on in the first half. This might bring it to an end, though, the second the ball is kicked. Be prepared for that. On we go. Missed. But some pats are able to recover. Bit of hit and hope happening now between both sides. They just probably want to get to the halftime break and have a rest. Dickinson sees it out a little unconventionally. He's been suffering through injury in the first round of the season and he's probably thankful for the couple of missed rounds that we did have, plus the Easter break too. That's a pretty long throw in there. That's a nice turn on the turn. Touch on the turn, fantastic. Gordo, centered pass. How? Can he play it in behind the pass? Was on to Nishal Shankar. They'll go through Shane Kumar instead. That's a dainty ball in behind. And Suhail Koya, will he slide in to keep this out? He doesn't need to, he's quick enough. What a first half from the number nine wearing center back. And still, we go on. Throw in taken quickly. The back heel flick towards, I believe, Hassan. Couldn't be delivered in as it's given away and some pats come forward again. It's a turnover for the umpteenth time in the last couple of minutes. It's been a bit of a sloppy second half of the first half for these boys. And that will finally bring about the last kicks of the game. The referee's whistle 
Brings it back into the first half, I should say. It's the first half that some Pats have had the better chances in, although a couple of pot shots were really, really deceiving for a couple of moments for the goalkeeper, and one that was on target brought Akanor into a great save. But besides a Barana Tesh penalty call very late on, in which they are asking the questions of the St. Pats boys, it is Tamba Aliyu's first ever match of the round goal that separates these two sides at half time. We'll come back in about 12 or so minutes, or wherever the teams decide that they feel like playing the second half. It'll probably be sooner rather than later due to the time and the day of the week. But until then, T Boys Goal puts some pats on top as they look to solidify top four position early on. See you soon.
Second half action here at a wet and wild Blacktown Football Park, not too far away from getting back underway. Some pats through Tamba Aliu, of course, have a one-goal advantage heading into the second stanza on this Wednesday night catch-up game of a game that was meant to happen a week and a half ago. My name is Mark DePoli. Thanks so much for joining us here. Thanks to those who left some positive comments, those watching in from around wherever you are in the world, tuning in to see their best friends and family members playing alongside tonight, including a gaming channel which is tuned in as well. Shout out to you watching along from our YouTube. Thanks for doing it. Both of the referees that I can see right now in my eyes that have donned a uh, undershirt skins, which means it is getting colder out there as we head towards winter. Of course, Tamba Aliu, the difference between these two teams, as mentioned already, Rudy Hill have the recovery work to do, but they have the players to do it is the question they need to look among themselves and figure out. They are missing some significant names within their ranks who are going to establish themselves this, in this competition over the next couple of years, I'm sure, but they don't have them tonight. And against a very strong looking St. Pats who have looked pretty defensively sound for the first time probably this whole season, it's going to be a tough ask. But they are capable of springing a surprise, and we've seen that they can hit them from distance too. If Gordo is on his game, then he's definitely going to be one to watch. Nishal Shankar can, of course, hit them, as we've seen on this pitch in live streams in all-age men's grand finals in years gone by. But St. Pat's also now striving not just for the win, but for the first clean sheet of a season in which they have been far from keeping when they've considered at least one goal in each and every single game. And on a couple of occasions, well, one occasion they considered four in the one. So a goal difference of 8-8 eight and eight now becomes 9-8, and eight, which means it's a goal difference of positive 1. Can they keep the first clean sheet? And if they do so, they'll ensure their first back-to-back uh, -back wins of the season. So it's some pats straight away with the early energy with the ball. Be sure to keep an eye out for potentially who you think will be the B2 Group Sox player of the match too. First string of possession given away there by Dickinson. Who's then clothesline Yasubuta, who's so unhappy with that. Not even an advantage given there. And I'm not sure if the referee was, was, was keen to that, to be perfectly honest. A big penalty shout, of course, in the first half towards the end of it, though. We'll go back to minute 42 and a half to see Baron Atesh getting taken out by the goalkeeper. And nothing happening about it. Strike taken from distance off the base of the post. Russell and Mangle, a rare goal scorer. When he does score one, it's always brilliant. And he came so, so close there. Well, that was almost the perfect revenge for the little headlock clothesline. And he gives him right now a little pat on the back of Iyasu Buta, who's still pretty unhappy with how things have gone unpunished. Well, here is the man who nearly just separated the goal, the two sides by two goals. So astute on the ball. Out for a throw. St. Pats keep their territory. Won't be able to see that gigantic light over Kalen Thompson, the assistant referee on that far side's head in the background. That's some road work happening along Eastern Road. Some trivia for you, by the way, in case we ever do one at an annual dinner, perhaps. The road in which our office is built on is called Football Drive. Towards the goal scorer, it was taken away from him, Barana Tesh. Yes, Ubuta, forgive me. Still now Tamba Aliu, delivered in, a little limp though. And forward they come, How was strong in the challenge. So was Michael Sola, though. Back he goes, the deepest player, not a goalkeeper in blue. Suhail Koya. Run being made in behind by Borj. Nice touch inside off his weaker right. Atesh goes for the clip. That's a lovely ball to Yasubuto. Has Leal to beat. Sorry, Rao, forgive me. And Junior gets there first. Back this will go all the way to Akanor, who had a positive first half when called upon. He 
He's running in behind again, Borges. Gonzalez fainted, faked, and didn't play it. Koya smarts on the ball without touching it. A ball in behind there of Ali Hassan. And the offside flag raised. Some pats close in on a second goal that would surely remove the reality of this being a contest. Can they find a higher gear than that of those in yellow and black? As mentioned, it's great to have Rudy Hill back in the Blacktown Premier League system, a proud old club. As mentioned, a founding member of the association as well. But what's to come from the next 10 minutes or so? Obviously, the next goal, absolutely critical to how the outcome of this game will be. But looking more likely to be some pats as they burst away down that right-hand side. Runners being made inside. Now runners being made in behind. Dickinson was there. Played simply to Hussain Al-Sad, cleared by Dickinson, who was put under a little bit of pressure. Picked up there by Pinch. Triangles being made between himself, Baranatesh, and Borge. Suhail Koya. Sent forward, Atesh. Aliyu wasn't making the run in behind, so it came to his feet and away from goal. Now towards goal, he turns. Now away from it again. They just maintain position of the ball. One centre back to another. Gonzalez gives it away. Can he make a run in behind? And pace in behind, not really their strong point. Must be frustrating. Mangul. Not his best. Sola. So talented. And strong. Atesh. Again, Sola strong. Not strong enough for that, though. The referee sees nothing wrong with it. Sola clearly giving up on appealing. He's quite literally not watched the ball since he gave it away. Now he's back in focus. One there by Borges, who came central to win that. Here is the man in question, Sola. Forward through Borges, through Gonzalez, now to Borges. The centre backs and the left back making the runs. Still maintaining possession. The defender showing the attackers how it's done. Borges, can he use his left foot to the best of his abilities? No, he couldn't pick out the pass. But it was a really nice bit of combination play between the 23 and the 26. So a corner has come in towards the back stick. It's a good ball. It's been cleared pretty bravely off the line there. First to it was Gonzalez. And that's taken away from him. A tussle verbally for whose ball it will be. Taken quickly. Atesh over the head there. Couldn't get the shot off. It's fallen here to Sowa. And now sent him behind. What's the pace of Gordo like? Not as quick as that. Off some Pats' back line.
Interestingly, no subs warming up yet for either side. Both teams are happy with what they're seeing out there with their initial starting 11s. Living slightly dangerously as Koya was forced to clear under pressure and he almost clipped those running in behind him. So a couple of contentious moments that some Pats will look back on and think, how do we not have a second goal from a penalty and not have a numerical advantage as that ball's put in? Could Rudy Hill hit back? Ball put in and cleared away before it came to Howe. And then struck from distance and it's just tipped over, I think. It was by Akano. No, he's saying it's the crossbar. The referee says it's a goal kick and eventually we come to a form of agreeance. So we're back in play. And the frustration's going for those in yellow. Some Pats back with the ball. Here is their captain. Dickinson holding up Tamba Aliyu just about legally. It's not the only team out there who are frustrated in amongst themselves. It's actually some Pats who are doing more of the fighting. It's another free kick appealed for, not given. Now it's been given after a bit of internal consultation, it seems. Some Pats can feel rightly done by there. So no wall just yet for Rudy Hill. They'll set one up now imminently. The two boys in the 21-2s comp being tasked with putting their face and body in the way of perhaps... A screaming football on a wet night like this. In it comes Mangle, who's got great whip towards the back post. What a save, point blank. It should be pushed in. It has been pushed in. It's Suhail Koya, the destroyer. With another match of the round goal. His second for the season. His second MOTR goal ever. And it's a really welcome one to double the deficit against that of Rudy Hill and double the advantage for those with some Pats Blue. A thoroughly deserved second goal and Rudy Hill, who had been resting on the laurels of a deep defence, have now finally found that one that is going to force them to push numbers forward. If they want anything from this game, something has to change, but some Pats thoroughly deserved who will now look to get through this game unscathed defensively. Sola now with a spring in their step. This could become three. He's found his best mate. T-Boy Aliyu. Great save, Singh. That should have been his second match of the round goal. Rudy Hill FC used to, of course, be called Rudy Hill RSL FC. That was formerly their name. It's been formally changed since then. It was a way of capturing the community and business side of the club as Aliyu comes forward. But that became disconjoined as Yasubuta heads it. Similar to that of Blake Skur against Mariong in the grand final, which went similarly wide like that, if you remember back to last year. 
And that name change from Rudy Hill RSL FC to Rudy Hill FC came coincidentally at the same time as that of the RSL actually changing to the name of West HQ. And I think Rudy Hill FC out here tonight in their first ever match of the round. We need to change something quickly if they are to find a goal, let alone some points. Frustrations growing across the faces of all of those in yellow collectively as some Pats continue to dive bomb forward in numbers. Another contentious decision that didn't go the way of some Pats, or at least that's how they feel. A spring of a string of possession, I should say. Cleared by the man who's kept this within reason and reach. Borge beaten to it. Back all the way to a very lonely Arkanor. And here is the man who separated them and applied the cushion. A lovely ball into the feet of Aliou, who's being harped on. Atesh is offside, who won't restart his run for some reason. Yasu Buta. Buta still. Still dilly dallying, but in a fancy kind of way. Mangle, first pass, I think, all night. That's gone backwards. Second one right there. It's just a perfect dink. He honestly has ability of any Premier League midfielder. It's more just that at this point of his illustrious career that he prefers to just relax around the middle of the park and play those dime-like passes. And they are worth their weight in gold. He is some Pat's most brilliant player, you'd have to say. There's a real concern for the well-being as a result of that head coming together with a Rudy Hill shoulder on Baran Atesh. So we're two here now for Rudy Hill. Bottom of the table with only a point from their first what, four games now. Should this stay the way that we're seeing it right now? Winless, only one point. It'll be four goals scored, 12 conceded. We're seeing that the jump up from reserves to first grade, a challenging one, even though, of course, there are some players who are bought from the first grade spaces around the place. For Daniel Gauci and co, it's a difficult one. The one that he's... I'm sure what he'll be doing is asking for time. Time to figure it out and let him build his project. It might, honestly, it might take five years. And in that time, he will lose some of these players to moving to other divisions. Age-based divisions. And he's got time to use and blend these young players into the kind of people he wants. I know the types of football that... Daniel Gauci watches and consumes on a regular basis and therefore will want to emulate to an extent. So Marion elsewhere are up 7-0. Thanks to those for letting me know as we're back in play now. Rudy Hill have gone to their bench for a more quick and strong-looking striker. A bit more of an enforcer, perhaps. Dickinson's been turned past by Aliou, who's starting to put the entire defence on ropes. Crossing. Sorry. Forward they come again. Could be delivered in here. By Adi. Plays the short option. He has to is now into the box and will be allowed to run for just a goal kick. So Imran Radha comes on. Imran Aziz Radha. In that 79 jersey. He's already looked... Like he's got a spring in his step. He's got something to prove here tonight. 
Game gone almost. Touch back to Dickinson. Sent forward towards Aziz rather. Solwa in behind, a little bit far from goal, unfortunately, and that momentum's cut down. Couple of step overs, they were mightily quick. A sliding in challenge was effective, though. Sure, it grazed the knees, too. So Cornyn to come in. It was a set piece floated in from this near side rather than the far side that caused the second goal. A bit of a kerfuffle in the box that Suhail Koya wearing that nine pounced upon. He is, of course, up there. Does the destroyer want a second? Swinging away from goal towards Mangle. In fact, it's been cleared off of the line and then cleared on the volley towards Aziz Rather. Welcome to the match of the round, Imran. The first of many, perhaps. Look at Manny Borges making this run in behind, and now he's being tracked by the 2-21-2s, and Koya goes for the cheeky back heel. Awesome pats on the ball. That's a mighty hoof forward. And Aliou might get there first. And the keeper's just about beaten him. Ended up being a really impressive ball in behind. I'm not sure if he exactly meant it, but if he did, my word. This is an awkward one here now for Akanor, but he's quite decisive in how he's dealt with it. One there by Junior Rao. There is Vinal Shankar. 34 and still going strong. Rowe there got involved. Buta came central and unfortunately couldn't reclaim possession completely. Here is Hussein Al Saad. Forward here for Imran Aziz, rather. Didn't get there first. Tamba Ali, you up against Rowe. Dickinson's coming to stalk his prey again. Running in behind. In fact, it was Adi. Another moment where some Pats feel agrees they don't have a frail in their favour. Imran rather has also left one in rather horrendously there. And now you can hear Sylvester Roberts asking as to why on a Wednesday night at teetering on 10 o'clock, they're having the absolute living daylights kicked out of them. And to be perfectly honest with you, I rather quite agree. And I'm not, that's, well, that's what we like to see. I'm certainly in agreement with the referee giving the caution there. First caution of the night. Got another big score update to give you from around the grounds, and I think I should always do my best to include as many competitions as possible. This time we're going to head to Park Lee's 35 fours, and they beat Rudy Hill's Peak of the Devils last week 3 1. And they'll go to Morgan Power Reserve on Friday night for another captivating game. Send me your Recent results, and I'll, of course, read them out on our live stream as we look to support all the teams in the Blacktown District Soccer Football Association. Are we looking for a ball? I believe we are, in fact, looking for a ball. 20 minutes left to go on this one. Plenty of time for things to change. Plenty of time to also find another ball. That now we just about will. Daniel. 
So in taken with the ball back in play and back in possession of those some Pats boys, although given away by Pinch. Here is Aziz Radha, who is cautioned, don't forget. Made a couple of yards there. Urge to go back or at least halt on the mark. Wait a minute, I've just realised that Marion was playing against Quakers Hill Tigers tonight. So Quakers Hill Tigers, who've just come off the back of beating Ponds, of course, the grand finalists. And third place finishes last year. They've beat them, or in the process of beating them, by a margin of seven goals. And that was a couple of minutes ago, with time left to go in all games around the BDSFA Premier League right now. That is a significant result, and with respect to the Tigers, a humbling one too, who are on such a high, such a difficult start to the season in terms of the on-paper teams they were facing, but a big 7-0 against them is going to put them right back to the drawing board, and perhaps that's a marker of the quality of the teams that they've beat in the process. I'm not sure. I'll let you decide. I'm already saying too much as I let my mind speak. But a very, very interesting night in the PL1 world. Love to see what else is happening in other games and we can give some live table updates if you're able to tune in and let us know what's happening around the grounds. Brad Dickinson's gone down. It'll be the end of his night when the referee spots it. He struggled with injury at the start of the season and now it's starting to hurt towards the end of this round four game of what is technically a round three catch-up. Still we go on though. The referee's now seen it. I've seen him have a glance and he's going to keep going. And St. Pat's now will do the gracious thing and stop the game. My word. So 21's legend Michael Cody, a two-time in a row 21's winner with first prospect and Marion. Got the first goal on the 14th minute. Kelvin Afori, player of the year, picked up, I think, what is his fourth goal already this year. Michael Cody also, again, back from that 21s, got a goal. Arrow, who we featured on our podcast, of course. Mervyn Chakal picked up his first two of the season. Josh Ross, formerly of Ponds, now that we mentioned them. And Mubarak Saeed. Wow. So it's not yet official, but that's what's coming through on dribble, which means Mariong arguably are looking stronger than last year. But for Tigers, it's probably one that they would rather wipe away and, and not quite start again, wipe away and forget about rather than go back to the drawing board and start again. They have a distinct way of playing, but unfortunately a better team has just unraveled them. I reckon the game in the reverse fixture could be a little bit more close-knit, let's say. Thank you to those who have let me know how things are going around the grounds. I will also do my due, 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 ooh, my word, due diligence and check the YouTube feed as well. If any results have come through there. They have not. So all the results coming through on Facebook. So let us know, please, what your results are as Brad Dickinson's night comes, unfortunately, to a close. And Rudy Hill try and get through this game with the deficit only being two, yes. Let us know what's happening in your games and we can give live table updates. PL1, PL2, WPL, whatever it is, we want to know. Start sending those results in, please. Well, Brad Dickinson's back on the pitch. His night is not over. He lives on. He is immortal, it seems. 15 to go and a lot of stoppage time too. And now it's picked up by Ranatesh, who has the chance to square it to his mate Yasu Buta. Can he do that? It's actually really fantastic defending by the ever-impressing right-back Hussein al Sand, the 19-year-old, no less. Ah, 
That should have been three, and it wasn't because of the great work of the right back. My word, some more results. Puns four, Rivo three, just about scraping a win in what would have been a fantastic game. Duneside, three one winners over workers who couldn't do it two in a row. Duneside and Marion looking at like the two strongest teams, and that ball's put in, and it's been put out for a goal kick. It is all happening around the ground, so some PL1 updates. First and second in this order, Mariong and Duneside. And from then on, I think it's pretty much every other single team between three and six points, except for Quakers, Juniors, and to my knowledge, Prospect. Aggressive play there, but just about considered legal on Borges from Hassan. Pow. Flash of lightning flicks across the screen. Put in towards Aziz, rather, who was, again, cautioned, as I mentioned. Cleared away by some pats, as Rudy Hill look a little bit more dangerous in attack in these last moments. Confirmation of a couple of results, certainly do inside and Tigers, as I can see that in our live stream some of their players are now watching this one. Tigers and some Patsas has a great rivalry in years gone by too, so a fantastic match of the round here. Between the two, they ended 3-2 the way of Tigers. Here is the man who's just saved it from being a 3-0 deficit game. And still 15 minutes left to go in this one. We pass inside to Howe, who tried to be too fancy there. And this is brewing to be another opportunity. But instead, Sola decides to slow things down. Matesh. Some Pats still yet to go to their bench. It's a cold night for those sitting out there with shorts on. A big result in the PL2. Finally, a big PL2 result. Oakville 5, Park Lee 3. In what very much could be considered one of the games of the catch-up Wednesday night round. So, a big result. A big, big result for Oakville who have had a... Stuttered start to the season by their lofty standards as T-Boy Aliou, can he cut past Junior Rao? Still T-Boy Aliou, can he find the finish? He's now a little far from goal. Soa straight at the keeper and now cleared. Michael Soa should have had a goal there. He feels hard done by, but congratulates the goalkeeper in the process. A fair player he is. Parkley suffered their first dropped points of the year. And another really big promotion favourite playoff early in the season. Pinch to the man with the most recent goal. Now Matesh. Look at the fluidity of this back line and how it's moving about. Excuse my voice crack. Offside flag raised. Parkley finally falter after such a great start to the season and the goal of the week winners, of course. This would actually move Blocktown some Pats equal on points with the now previous league leaders, but that is assuming, though, that Polonia and or Town Rangers have picked up at least one point. Having gone down their goal difference by two, Parkley's has now gone from six to four, up by two for Zampat to go from zero to two. So it would be, by the way it looks now, assuming that Town Rangers and Polonia have both won. Polonia first, Town Rangers second, Parkley third, Blacktown, Zampat's fourth. Rudy Hill, of course, playing here tonight, would be the ones sitting at the foot of the Premier League. Still a little no press 
from that of the boys in yellow. You can see what they're trying to do. The good thing is they haven't actually quite given up at all in this game. They have not fallen over and just let themselves be torn apart. You can see the intensity of that moment right there as Buta picks up another one into his knee. Ball in behind. Really, see, we really well defended. There is intensity and effort there where needed. As Dickinson loses the ball and still keeps going on and then hits the deck hard. And some words of wisdom being spoken there by Dickinson. And tensions flare a little bit in the cold, which can always be expected in competitive sports. And the players are just saying hello to each other. Asking for a handshake now is Dickinson. Brad Dickinson, a player from, I wouldn't say bygone, but a player from an older sort of pre-COVID era, I would say. An enforcing figure. Doesn't like yellow cards, though. A great personality for this competition. Lumped forward. If they could find a goal here, we could have a frantic last 10 minutes or so, you know. There are exactly 10 minutes still to go. Dickinson again up out of position to put some pressure on. And now they run in behind. It was the lack oh, offside again. And that was clearly offside despite the protests. And then Yasu Buta also missed an absolute sitter from a yard out. And by the law of the game, should receive a yellow card. He will. Nine to go. One in the air, just about fairly enough. Mangle gets back up as quick as he was shot down. And that's a very impressive clearance. Buta, who's also been cautioned, don't forget, has to be careful. Handball is the call. Handball is the call that's been answered by the referee. Protests from that of Rudy Hill. Who are looking a little bit out on their feet there. A little tired from a lot of chasing in this second half. So it's almost this exact position that caused the cushion between these two sides. And really put the game beyond any reasonable doubts at 2-0. The exact same two players who were in that wall at the time are here to stand in the way as well. Will Suheil Koya get on the end of another one here? There's a player, not on the front post, but the back post for Rudy Hill. Delivered in very similar to last time. It's been spilled by the goalkeeper. It will be claimed by Arsalan Mangal, who has a match of the round goal now to his name. The number three picks up goal number three, and now the three points... That takes them up to seven as they hunt down Park Lee on goal difference in what's shaping up to be a really, really hotly contested promotion race. In truth, the wet conditions probably had a bit to do there with the, mis the misguided reach up for the ball by Aaron Singh, who's had a pretty tremendous night all night with his decision making. That one a moment he won't want to watch back, unfortunately, for him. Also probably the fact that it's about midnight now at this point that we're playing this game. I'm sure fatigue, physically and mentally coming into it, it's a difficult position to be in. The goalkeeper, of course, 
Some Pats will go to their bench. Their number 12, Mark Atia, comes on for a match of the round debut. And he looks really keen for it too. I think it's Iasu Buta who made way. He's been kicked all about the park tonight, but he's kept a level head the whole time through and had a really impressive performance all in all. Lots of pressure being put on Borges here, who doesn't respond with any anything more than a little raised arm there, asking the question of, hey, is that just about a foul now? Clearly a very level-headed player is young Emmanuel Borges. Adi. Nice play, some pats. Three to the good. Still trying to maintain that clean sheet, though. First touch here for Atia, who then a little worriedly gives it away. I'm sure he just wants to impress in his limited minutes here tonight. Nice press by some pats, but Rudy Hill have actually worked through it. Rather nice. That's very, very nice indeed. So you can see what Rudy Hill are trying to do. And just four games into the season, they've got some time to work on it. Daniel Gauci did say that it would take him about seven or eight rounds before they really start playing their best football, don't forget. And when you see patterns of play like that, you tend to believe in what the coach is saying. He knows his team best. He's worked with these guys all before. And if he wasn't not feeling it anymore, he'd be out doing it on the pitch with them too. Cramps all round now. Well, cramps specifically for a couple of St. Pat's players who are stretching on and off the view of your screens right now. We're into the final four or so minutes of the game. I can play where you're about to be. So it will be. Rudy Hill still trying to compete. Certainly a commendable effort. It has been. How? How now? How now? Oh, it's taking a little bubble. And then on the follow-up, a great reaction save. They are so desperate for that clean sheet. The danger still not lost on them, though. That will be a corner. As Rudy Hill and their intent to pounce quickly has almost ended up with a consolation goal. So who's your pick for the B2 Group Sox player of the match? Almost certainly it would have to be someone wearing a dark shade of blue out there. Who's your pick? Ball delivered in towards the penalty spots. Actually, Imran Aziz rather who gave it away. Dickinson goes forward. Push by Borge. Wasn't enough to warrant a free kick. Kumar who scored down that end in a grand final, of course. First involvement for Mahir Gounder as well, who's come on in the last couple of minutes. In behind now, it's some Pats almost look like they're the defending team here. It's a complete four on one that somehow some Pats haven't looked like they weren't going to score from that, and they never did. It looked like actually that Hussein Al Saad was the one who was the attacker there, and he was left all alone to defend, and somehow he did it all by himself. Well, he's actually had a very, very impressive day as the former 21 twos player. Shows you the quality in that competition too. Towards the front stick, it's actually been beaten away before it got to the goalkeeper. Can they launch something here? Rudy Hill. One in the air. Oh, and he's on a yellow card. He's got to be really careful because he's critical for the reserve grade as well. There's absolutely no need 
to be doing stupid things like that. And then someone's also kicked the ball away in the process, and I think he's come away without a yellow tinge next to his name. Some pats go to the subs once again. Suleiman Jalo comes on for a match of the round debut in the famed number seven jersey of some pats. Gets a couple of minutes to impress Mario Gonzalez and the rather quite surprising big crowd watching along considering the time of night it is. Koya from one centre back to another in Gonzalez now who picks this up. Feet just to the halfway line. Dickinson came away with it though. Did Gounder before giving it away. Dickinson ended up back with him. Big challenge by Gounder. Wasn't enough to put him off though. And now he's pushed in the air. A couple of hearty challenges going in out there late in the game. Both sides are calling for a free kick in their favour. It's been cleared. This will be another contest in the air which Dickinson will win. How wins that now? It's Dickinson and Aliu in a foot race. Slight press in the back there of Dickinson. And he's pushed the player there off the ball, which has gone unnoticed once again. But some pats go on and keep their heads. Now, 30 seconds or so into added on time. Moving dangerously, Akinor, who's probably feeling brave considering the scoreline, but they must, must. Want to collectively achieve a first clean sheet of the season here. Dickinson sliding in. And now off the bench. Forward they come. Jalo. Jalo has just come onto the pitch. Fresh legs in that seven jersey. Jalo seals it. Welcome to the match of the round. Suleiman Jalo has one of the quickest ever subbed on impacts in match of the round history. Four to the good for some pats who have been far too good tonight. It's been very impressive on camera as they wind up a rather interesting night of Premier League 1 and 2 fixtures from around the grounds. Rooty Hill have shown glimpses of fight and of promise even in the last couple of moments of this game. A couple of mistakes as well also led to their demise tonight. They have shown pockets of brilliance but they're not there yet and some pats well they're most certainly on their way I asked the question have they taken that next step to be ready for promotion well I'll ask you the question now are they they might just be and with Singh injured in goal I think it would be only right if this game even if it would be considered Effectively, prematurely, should just come to an end. Both sets of players are now getting colder out there. Muscular fatigue setting in. A Wednesday night game three days after, some four days after. Their most recent round, three days until their next one too. Well, Singh's back up and on we will go, I do think. Some Pats are loving life right now though. Well done though to number seven, Suleiman Jalo who was embraced in the celebrations by his delightfully appeased teammates. There's a physio still on the pitch. I'm not exactly quite sure what is actually going on right now. Still we go on into three minutes of added on time. Uh, both teams now get their shape back. Perhaps the last kickoff of this rather telling 90 minutes. Whistle to the lips already. It's been brought to an end by referee Greg Roberts. Some pats. Far too good in a very impressive performance on a cold night here at Blacktown Football Park. It's actually a ground they have struggled on in recent years. They've scored some quite brilliant goals here in years gone by, but it's a result that I think that they will cradle for a while now. They've needed this. They've got a first clean sheet, a first mightily convincing win, a goal on match the round debut for Suleiman Jalo. Really, really got the party started towards the end, but the match winner, of course, was Tamba T-Boy Aliou 
with his great goal earlier in the first half. Of course, Suhail Okoyo got another match of the round goal, the number nine who plays at centre-back for Arsenal and Manga will claim one, even though it was not claimed by the goalkeepers. It slipped through his wet gloves. That will do it tonight. I urge you all, I don't know why you're watching so late on, but I'm so grateful that you are. Thank you for tuning in. If you did tune in, if you do like what you hear, if you did like what you see, please do remember to leave a like on our stream, whether it's on Facebook or YouTube. Remember to tune in to the Blacktown Football Hour, actually, the Blacktown Premier League podcast tomorrow. Of course, there's an old habit, doesn't it? My name is Mark DePaul. It always is, was, and will be. Thank you very much for being here. I do appreciate you all. We will see you on Saturday for some more Premier League action. Until then, good ciao.